Hello, everyone. Welcome to hello. <laughs> Welcome to 3S Art Space. We're so thrilled to present this evening's performance. For those of you new to 3S Art Space, it's the newest nonprofit live arts venue here in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. We have a performance space, an art gallery, and locally sourced restaurant right here in this building, as well as the bar in here. And um, having just opened our doors this past March, um, our mission is to present bold, emerging art and entertainment, similar to the performance you're going to see tonight. If you like what you see and you're not already a member of 3S, there are lots of great benefits to doing so. And um, you can find out more and sign up right out at the box office. And thank you to our sponsors, The Sound, an independent free weekly newspaper that covers news, arts, culture, and events here on the seacoast. And also Haig and Martino, one of the state's finest creative agencies. We have some great shows coming up. In fact, our October calendar just arrived from the printer yesterday. Please do grab one from the box office counter on your way out. Also, you can find out more information on upcoming events at our website, 3sarts.org. Um, a few words about tonight's show. Uh, we had the priv privilege of hosting local choreographer and dancer Wendy Quinn's most recent work, a piece that combines a historic and deeply personal narrative with some state-of-the-art technology. Last, some housekeeping. Please silence your cell phones, and at the artist's request, please no photographs. Thanks very much, and now without further ado, Wendy Quinn, Life After Life.
Могилевской губернии Сальман Хавкер Мин 19 лет, в том, что участвуя в культурном сообществе социалистов-революционеров, составившимся к насильственному посягательству путем вооруженного восстания, за изменения в России законами основных установленного образа правления и имеющих в своем распоряжении значительное количество боевых патронов и похищенных ночь на 13 декабря 1905 года из Слободского военного стейкаута с 313 пунктовок. Он, предприняв в средних числах декабря, Сообщество вооруженного восстания вступил в организованную силу активную боевую дружину и 18 декабря 1905 года в городе Вяр открыто выступил в ней по обстоятельствам от него независимым не приступил к выполнению намеченного плана. Виновен ли тот же посудимый Яхнин в том, что 18 декабря от 1905 года в городе Вят, участвуя в сходище вооруженных оркестрейных оружий членов по два высшего преступного сообщества, собравшихся в квартире одного из них, он, будучи сам вооружен, заряженную винтовку, выступил вместе с другими лицами на выпуске своих товарищей, окрашенных войсками в помещении городской водокачки. Причем застигнутый на пути войском, зашел с остальными дружинниками в дом Якова Киркина, где осажденная чинами полиции войсками дружина, действуя за подчиненными силами участников, оказала нашим чинам требования сдачи оружия в вооруженное сопротивление, открыв по ним ружейный огонь, в который рядовой Шубин был ранен, рядовой Антышев контужен, рядовой Плетнев и Чулкин убиты на повал. На эти вопросы особое присутствие по обсуждению всех обстоятельств ответило виновен. На седьмой виновен не в качестве члена сообщества, а на четвертый и шестой вопрос последовательные ответы отрицательные.
Don't go away. We have a um, thank you all, first of all, for coming. And uh, we have a little panel discussion planned for after the performance with some scientists and artists, local artists, Lucy Terrien, Joseph Ca uh, Semple. <laughs> I was going to say Joseph Campbell. I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so please stay. And uh, because we're a small audience, we'd love to hear um, some of your questions or thoughts as well. So, thank you. Let's see, who? Lucy? Joe, and I don't know. Bonsoir, Lucy. Comment ça va? Ah, bon? Oh, no, ils ont, ils ont pris l'escalier. Uh, This is great, Joe, right? Yep. Hi, yep. thank you for coming. Absolutely wonderful. Okay. Est-ce qu'il y a un escalier là-bas? Oh, <laughs> pardon. <laughs> Bienvenue. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so um, here we are again. <laughs> um, we've invited, last night we had two scientists, tonight we have Joe, um, to talk about how, um, how it felt for them to see data that Marty takes in his music and turns it into, the scientific data, and turns it into music. So did you take Good any... Question. Okay, so my question to Joe, thank you, I'm a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you have a chance to have a beer 
I know. <laughs> <laughs> so my question to you, Joe, is uh, do you have some data that Marty has sonified? I or, have but do you know the Hubbard Brook oh, yeah, yeah, stuff? Yeah. Okay. So my question is what is it like for you to see scientific data embedded in a piece like this, which is about the Hubbard Brook uh, data is about trees and the New Hampshire forests. Um, but now we're taking it to another place, which is family trees, my family. And so what is it like for you to see data embedded in a piece like this? Great. Uh, and, and what a wonderful performance. Thank you. It was just fantastic. So it was, it's just really wonderful. Um, I, I, I've encountered uh, Mahdi's uh, data uh, put into, into music um, uh, already, and, and it's just fascinating. Every time I, I hear it and every time I, I see Mahdi and he'll show me the next thing he's done, I'm just like, wow, we go off in a million different directions in, in, two, min in two minutes just thinking about new ways that, um, that we can, I'll say here, but the way we can see data, but I mean this consciously, right? I mean, when you hear it, it's different. It's, 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 it's telling me something in a way that I, I never thought about it before. And, um, and it, it's explosive for me because I'll start, uh, uh, my interest started in, in forests with insects. And so I, I look very small and then um, out of necessity uh, in, in job security, I started looking very big. Um, and then, uh, the, so the, the, the ecosystem, just, it was just sort of this explosion up, looking at systems and global systems. And, and then uh, Mahdi comes along with this new way of seeing how these systems are interacting. And then, then suddenly we see it performed, which is a whole, I, I had a whole mix of emotions when I'm watching that whole thing. And I, I of course, uh, did my background. I'm like, I, I know this is about forest, but there was sometimes, um, and I'll bring this back around, when I felt like I needed to protect the character that I was watching up here. And the music was, was, was at first it was like, oh, that's great. And then some of the music that came out afterwards was, was sort of um, making me feel a little like I need to get up and do something about this now before, you know what I mean? Um, so it was really an interesting flow of emotions that came, came through. Um, beyond just thinking about the ecology and forest and things like that. And then I began to see it grow. And then I began to think about, uh, uh, towards the end of the performance, I began to think about uh, being a tree, a single tree, um, and um, watching how everything changed around me, uh, thinking as a sapling, and then I grow, and then I grow, and I watch trees come and go, and I watch whole systems and forest societies change over time. And you can imagine just laying there and looking up at, you know, if you lay under a tree, my wife has done this exercise before, looking at the tree. And then, and we have students all doing this as well, which is kind of a fun little trick. Um, and we're watching the tree. Now I want you to look at the tree and imagine you're the tree and think about it changing. It's been here for 200 years, you know? It's been here a long time. And then, then everything, the forest changed, everything changed. Um, and then, at the end of it, I was thinking about where is it going? What's it going to look like as we move forward? And I'm, I'm looking at a, an insect you're probably familiar with, uh, the hemlock woolly adelgid. Some of you might have heard of this, which is infesting hemlock along the East Coast. and It's devastating, the hemlock. And what's coming in are rhododendron and other types of, of, of trees. And so I'm looking at and, and with climate change, we think about how forests will, ch how they'll look 50, 100 years from now. And our job is to protect the system, to make sure the system stays. But I, it'll be different than what it was before. And the character is certainly different now. The character became something new with two belief systems coming together. You know, and I could see this, this evolution of a system, evolution of a, a culture, evolution of a forest. So it was really interesting, yeah. So, yeah. And Joe, um, where are you? University of Southern Maine, yep. and you are a forest ecologist. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great question. 
I play in everybody's sandbox, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I teach forest ecology, um, so, uh, but I, I work a lot with insects and how insects are interacting with the forest. And I teach in the Department of Environmental Science up there as, at, at the University of Southern Maine. So, but there's nothing that, you know, I'm, everything is really interesting to me. So um, I'm really open to this sort of stuff. And I can, I can see, you know, give us some time. We're sitting, we'll be brainstorming new ways to think about this. So it's, it's everything is so, sort of open. So yeah. Um, I wanted to tell a story about um, you, Marty. Okay. <laughs> so that's OK. <laughs> <laughs> um, when we were working on the piece, and we were, I, I was realizing, wow, trees breathe. We have to have music about the trees breathing. I mean, families breathe, we breathe, trees breathe. We have to do. That. And so Mar let's take, let's pull out from the Hubbard Brook music, just the strand about evapotranspiration. <laughs> and so we did that. And then Marty says, something's wrong with the data. It doesn't sound right. <laughs> and so he calls Lindsay. Now, you keep in mind, scientists are looking at graphs and bars and numbers. And he calls Lindsay and he says, Lindsay, there's something wrong with the data. It doesn't sound right. <laughs> and, and it was just the, the data wasn't being processed correctly, and it was too low because the trees should have been breathing more in the summer, and we should have heard more marimbas coming up during the daytime and then back down at night, and they weren't there. So we realized there was an error both in my code and also in the data processing code at the University of New Hampshire. <laughs> so it, it was this interesting interaction between the arts, trying to use the data in the artistic form, and then all of a sudden we're able to serve the science by finding an error in the, you know, in the data processing. So that was interesting. Some, uh, so I met Joe a year ago, um, about a year ago, when I was invited to a conference up at Hubbard Brook Forest on universal design. And so Joe's been involved in that as well, you know, allowing people of every, every um, you know, disability to get into, or every ability, you know, different abilities of people, to get into the science and to go out into the forest, even though they might not be able to walk the same way, you know whatever, the difficulties, walking or seeing or hearing. So, um, and I'm going to be speaking up at University of Southern Maine, it looks like, on November 12th. So. <laughs> um, now to Lucy. <laughs> I called Lucy a few weeks ago and said, Lucy, you have to come to my piece. Please, please come. And I said, we're doing a whole thing about Quebec. You know, you have to see it. I want you to see it. And we're using A la Claire Fontaine. Uh, the song, and she says, oh my god, you're raising the flag, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought we have to invite Lucy to talk a little bit about the song. <laughs> well, first of all, félicitations. Um, I was very impressed with your facial expressions and the um, different moods that you brought. I'm going to speak from an artistic point of view. Um, the different moods that she portrayed just in her face and uh, along with the movement, of course. And I can see how you would have worked with Pontine, mm -hmm. um, with the whole fabric thing and everything. I think your set design was is very, very impressive. And uh, as well as, I mean, in all the detail, the, how the dress fits the background, and the, it's wonderful. And the music, well, I'm a very multicultural person. In fact, I speak about the different transitions that the French-Canadian music has made. Um, through the Humanities Council. Um, so um, to go through all these stages of your life, along with the music, uh, it's very impressive. A la Claire Fontaine is a song that is, came over to Quebec uh, from France in the 1600s. Um, it's thought that there's probably over 500 versions of it now, because people... Um, transformed it depending on whether they could reach the notes or to show off some artifice or to uh, they change the text to fit their own uh, whims and uh, the text was always the most important part to all French music anyway the music was the melody was secondary so the text was changed many many times um, 
and it still exists. Actually, the keepers of it now are really the Franco-Americans here in New England, because um, French folk music, yes, arrived from France mostly into Quebec, but the music has uh, evolved in Quebec since then. I want to come back to your your Montreal roots, though I could see them all tonight. Um, the music has evolved so much since then that um, that French folk music really isn't brought out much anymore unless it's just to teach uh, teach the children, yeah, or to teach the background and the history. So the French in France only bring it out uh, to study in music uh, and music history. The French in um, Quebec bring it out mostly just as a recall, but the Franco-Americans uh, have kept it, hung on to it and kept it because they came here in the um, 1850s to work in the in the mills, and this is a demonstration of their culture. And so, when they're at home uh, celebrating, which they've hung on to their culture very nicely. Um, and they, they cook their traditional meals, and they sing these traditional songs. So it's very present here, but not so present anymore in Quebec and definitely in the past in France. But I wanted to say that, you know, uh, I'm from Montreal, and so is Wendy, um, that performance is very avant-garde in Montreal, and uh, this is very avant-garde. <laughs> and I've seen, <laughs> thank you, I've seen Marty's uh, demonstration of a science uh, demonstrated in sound before when you did a presentation on the sound of DNA. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that was, I said, okay, only Marty could do this. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Okay, so now, uh, now that we've had a little history lesson, <laughs> Does anybody in the audience have any questions or thoughts that they might like to share? It's hard to see you guys out there, but uh, are there any thoughts, questions, experiences? I cannot see. How do you obtain the sounds of this forest? How do you go about doing that? The question is, how do we obtain the sounds from the forest? And the sounds uh, are from originally from data that's recorded from multi a multitude of sensors that are placed in the forest to record, you know, carbon dioxide and temperature and the amount of water in the soil and uh, the stream flow and how fast it is. They've built these special things called weirs up in the middle of New Hampshire, in the middle of this forest, that can record the stream flow through a particular area. And there's seven areas in this one forest. And so I take those numbers and I, and I turn the numbers into expressions of music. And those expressions can be, in this case, they were basically just, I turned the numbers into pitches in, different, in a scale played by a particular instrument per sensor. So the streams are the low bass sounds and the temperature is the flute and the soil and water, the water and soil levels is the guitar pitches and the precipitation are, are uh, cymbal sounds that you hear shh, when it rains. And uh, so, so in this case, we're really just using pitch I, I for the Hubbard Brook data, the beginning music data and the evaporable transpiration, marimbas every day. So those are the marimbas breathing, sorry, the trees breathing in the sound of marimbas coming and going. And I made it in, in a four seconds, where every day goes by in four seconds, because that's kind of like how we breathe every about four seconds it takes us to take a breath in and out. And I wanted it to be related to us as humans to experience the forest in that way. Um, yeah. Hopefully there's another one or two questions or thoughts, anything anybody would like to share. It's very quiet out there. Okay.
I just really wanted to watch you, but I had to make sure you were in the frame. So every time I tried to watch you, then it was like, oh no, she's still in the frame. So anyway, I wish I could have just watched you. It was lovely from, anyway. We're filming it with three cameras, shoots by Steve Giraud, and uh, we're very, and Roberta, his wife. So we have a husband and wife team, very technical team here tonight also with us. And I just wanted to say, you know, we've, we've been working, I'm very proud of Wendy for following this dream that she had a year ago where she saw these boxes or a post, billowing cloth. I saw a billow, it was a dream and it was just a fragment of a cloth billowing above my head and it was attached to posts and um, the thing about the dream that I forgot to mention last night was it was ecstatic. It was, I was, it was so happy. And that's what made me think, I, I think I'm supposed to do something with this. So I'm so proud of her for following that dream. And we've had a great time working together as a couple, creatively coming up with ideas to, to help this show uh, come into being. And so we, we feel like we're on a, on a new sort of groove <laughs> together in our creative life together. So I'm really happy to, to see it come to, come to this. Uh, we'd also like to thank everybody that participated in some fashion or another to help us produce this piece. My daughter, Katie, was very instrumental in <laughs> the beginning and, um, and many of the pieces, parts of the piece, came from our working together early on. So I do want to acknowledge her input. Thanks. <laughs> And of course, thank you to 3S, to Anne, Anna Prather, to Nick, and to Martin Holbrook. Thank, thank you. you. Everyone else, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I guess we can go home now. <laughs> <laughs>